Doctor. So good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Yogesh Patil. I'm a practicing vitreo retina surgeon in Washi, Navi, Mumbai. We are attached to a hospital, Agarwal's Eye Hospital, which is one of the most prominent hospital in the entire of the Western Maharashtra, which is all super specialty related consultants associated to serve the eye related diseases. So today we will be talking about uh, diseases which are concerning to the retina part. So briefly, I will start with the what exactly is the retina. So if we see a structure of eye, I just share with you all people, the structure, eye is like a ball. The way ball is hollow inside, our eyeball in the inner part is filled with a structure called as a vitreous and the backmost portion of the eye which goes around the globe is called as a retina. So this retina is the structure where the image gets formed. So whatever we perceive in the form of light, it gets converged onto the retina and that is where the exact image has been formed kind of. The retina overall is the most important structure from the vision perspective and that gives us a crisp clarity of vision, whatever we read, write, whatever we do, the fine activity, everything ultimately comes from the retina kind of. So this is all short about where exactly the retina is situated, how exactly it functions. Now we will go on to the different kind of diseases which can be associated with the retina. The first and foremost, as every one of us know, ki such a huge population in India is suffering from the diabetes as well as from the blood pressure kind of, and we just call it as a hypertension. The diabetes as well as blood pressure, both are associated with various retina related problems. So as your physician, whoever will be treating the diabetes and blood pressure problems will always tell you the way they should undergo the checkups from the kidney related problem, foot related problem. Same way, every person who is suffering from diabetes, who is suffering from blood pressure should always have their routine eye related checkup, particularly to rule out all the retina related problems. Retina related problems are called as a diabetic retinopathy as well as same way called as a hypertensive retinopathy which is seen in the people who have got a blood pressure. So how exactly this disease manifests? Firstly, the correlation is between how good is your control of the underlying condition that is whether your sugar is under good control, are you been controlling the blood pressures well? And if your pressures and sugars are not under good control and these conditions become chronic or older, it will start affecting the various organs in the body, including the retina. In the retina, the people will have different kind of complaints. Most important complaint is they will start facing the reading difficulty. So the complaint is earlier I used to read the paper very, very clearly. I was able to read the paper hour long kind of and, and gradually my reading vision is deteriorating. Second most complaint is people start seeing the objects little distorted. Distorted means somebody's face won't be very clear. It will uh, appear to be distorted kind of and this condition, we in our language called it as a metamorphosia. So decrease in the reading vision, distortion of the object are the earliest symptoms where one should suspect the person is having a retina related problem and he should have his checkup with the ophthalmologist at the earliest. As this condition worsens, Besides having these earlier two problems, what we have discussed, person will start having a lot of black dots floating in front of the eye. These conditions are called as a floaters. So floaters in a person who has a diabetes, who has a blood pressure, they can either be age related or associated with more devastating disease. That is the advanced form of a diabetic retinopathy. 
where some amount of bleeding is happening in the retina and this is an absolute critical condition and should be treated as early as possible kind of thing. And as it further worsens, then gradually person starts losing a distance vision at it comes to the stage where doing day-to-day -day activities, walking in her or his own house also becomes difficult. So this is how a diabetic retinopathy or a hypertensive retinopathy progresses from stage one till to stage four to five. Initial complaints being reading difficulty, distortion of the images. As it progresses, person will start having floaters or a lot of black dots floating in front of the eye. And in advanced stages, doing a routine activity, walking on your own, doing a casual work in the house becomes difficult kind of thing. This is in short about the diabetic retinopathy. Other retina related diseases are common in the people who have got a high minus power. So usually the powers will start as minus 0.5, minus 1, up to 2, 3. Anything more than minus 3 and above, we call it as a high minus power. So at least 20 to 25% of the patients who have high minus power, more than minus 3, can be associated with retinal problem. We call it as a lattice degeneration. In a simple language, these are the areas where your retina will be thinner compared to the rest of the retina and this thinning will keep on progressing as the age increases or as your minus number keeps on increasing. So if at all somebody has a minus power of more than minus 3, they should always have their thorough retina checkup from a retina specialist to rule out whether they have these kind of an lattice degenerations or not. Unfortunately, if at all they are there, then the treating retina specialist will take a call whether they needs to be treated with the help of a treatment, we call it as a barrage laser or they can just be observed kind of an. So this is about hmm. retina problems associated in the people who have a minus powers. Lastly, we will come on to a disease which is becoming very, very increasing more rapidly and getting more and more troublesome as the age expectancy is increasing. We call this condition as an age-related macular degeneration. So this is the condition as the name of the disease itself suggests, age-related. This is particularly seen in a people who are 55 or 60 years, more than that kind of thing. In a simple terms to explain, the way we have a digestive power in the stomach, same way we have a digestive power in the retina. So in certain individuals, after the age of 55-60, the digestive power in the retina reduces and some of the unwanted substances starts getting accumulated in the retina. These unwanted substances disturbs the metabolic activity or in a simple language digestive system of the retina and people will develop a condition we call it as a macular degeneration. Macular degeneration happens in two stages. One is called as a dry stage and other is called as a wet stage. Dry stage is the one where your retina is getting gradually thinner. Now, anything which is getting thinner will ultimately end at its baseline. And once it ends at its baseline, that stage is called as a wet degeneration. Out of the two, if somebody has a macular degeneration, dry is little better when because the visual impact in a dry is very slow and the progression of the disease itself is also very slow in a dry stage. If somebody gets detected with a dry macular degeneration, he should have his retina checkup once in a six to eight months. Doctor usually might be prescribing you a tablets called as an antioxidant tablets. The role of this medicine is to reduce the rate of progression. Unfortunately, there is no treatment as of now available which can stop the progression of the disease, but the medicine help us to reduce the rate of progression. This is about a dry degeneration. 
Unfortunately, somebody who is in a wet degeneration, this is a condition where some of the blood vessels in your retina are leaking the blood and they are leaking the fluid in the retina. And this makes life very disturbing because again, there will be a lot of distortion. Person will gradually lose the reading vision and this condition is a dire emergency. If not treated in time, whatever vision loss happens, it's an unfortunate a permanent vision loss. Treatment to the bed degeneration is in some form of injections to be given in an inner aspect of the eye. These injections are called as an intravitreal anti-VGF injections. They are available with several names or with the several medicine names kind of an which injection is appropriate for me is decided by the doctor depending upon what type of an wet degeneration you have and how bad is this wet degeneration. Now, there are a lot of myths about these injections kind of and key. should we take an injection inside the eye, these injections might damage my vision further more and all that. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, these are not the true informations. Uh, injections are very, very safe. These injections have been given for last 20 years or more than that and they are absolutely scientifically proven in its effectivity to curtail the further loss of vision kind of. Second problem is these injections are usually prescribed on a monthly interval. So person or a patient who is suffering from a wet macular degeneration is supposed to come every month to the hospital, take his injection at least for first initial three to five months. And after that, the injection frequency varies depending upon the response what we have got with this initial first few injections, kind of. Coming to the treatment part of the diabetic retinopathy. So, diabetic and blood pressure related retinopathies, first and foremost important treatment is in the form of controlling your baseline disease, that is well control of your diabetes as well as the control of your blood pressure. Most important single most parameter which indicates the control of your diabetes is a test called as an HbA1c which tells us not only your today's that day level of the blood sugar but your overall control over a period of next three months. So, first and foremost for the diabetic and blood pressure related retinopathies, you need to keep a good control of these two parameters. And simultaneously, the eye related doctors will again tell you regarding these kind of an injections to be taken on monthly interval. If somebody is suffering from a problem called as a macular edema because of the diabetic or BP related retinopathy, there is other form of a condition uh, treatment modality called as a laser treatment where the leaking blood vessels in the retina are treated with the help of laser treatment to prevent a further bleeding from happening in an inner aspect of the eye. So this is all about the overall medically treatable retina conditions. Now there are certain conditions or a diseases in the retina which needs only and only surgical treatment. The main diseases among these are retinal detachment where the retina come out of its place and person suddenly ends up losing the vision. So the typical history is I was absolutely all right till yesterday and moment I got up in the morning I lost the vision completely kind of. And so usually the retina detachment is an emergency condition and it should be treated surgically as early as possible. Second conditions which are age related which needs a surgical management are we call it as a macular hole or a epiretinal membrane. These are the condition which comes with the aging and can be very well treated with the help of surgeries with a good recovery rates. And lastly the surgical retina condition is advanced stages of the diabetic retinopathy where extensive amount of bleeding has happened inside the eye or some of the patients will develop something we call it as a tractional retinal detachment. These are the retina diseases which needs to be surgically operated. The retina surgeries nowadays has become 
pretty uncomplicated or i'll say more of a simpler thing with the advent of high end microscopes with the advent of high end machines and availability of the laser treatment surgery is usually done under local anesthesia in the form of some kind of an injection is given on the surrounding part of the eye which will numb that particular area so that during the surgery patient doesn't get any pain surgery we usually last for an hour or so and it is usually done as a day care surgery means you patient will come maybe in the morning at around 10 o'clock might undergo surgery around 12 o'clock and after a stay of 2 to 3 hour he can practically go back to the home with a hospital stay of 5 to 6 hours over certain conditions are there during which operating the patient we might need to put a oil inside the eye that oil is known as a silicone oil usually patients with advanced form of the retinal problems the surgery is done with the help of an oil called as a silicone oil which is put in a inner cavity of the eye wall and once patient stabilizes from the primary disease everything settles down well vision gain has been proper maybe somewhere between the duration of 3 to 6 months after the primary surgery one more shorter form of the surgery is done to remove the silicone oil so this is all about what we call it as a medical retina diseases which includes diabetic retinopathy which includes hypertension related retinopathy it includes problem people who are having because of the minus power and lastly the macular degeneration and the second aspect we call it as a surgical retina where person with the advanced diabetic diseases people with the retinal detachment macular hole epiretinal membrane these are the conditions where surgeries will be required so this is all a broader perspective of what retina is what all diseases are there in the retina and how we treat it kind of now i'll be very much happy to take your questions and doubts if at all people have thank you Okay, so question I got is what is retinal detachment? So as I've already told, if we see a structure of eye, I'll be showing you if at all you can see over. This is how I look from the front aspect. If you make a cross section of it, this internal part is a hollow cavity. And this red structure, if at all you are able to see, is the retina which is attached to a white portion what we see externally kind of that. So the retina and the white uh, white structure we call it as sclera are attached to each other. This retina if at all comes out of its place from the whiter portion is called as a retinal detachment. So the question I got is, is it possible to do a patch clamp on retina hole mount using inverted microscope? Uh, unfortunately, I'm not able to get this question. What exactly somebody is wanting to ask kind of an. Yeah. So the next question is, what are the symptoms of retinal detachment? So as I said, the retina is the place where the image gets formed, kind of, and that way around. And if it comes out of its place in a retinal detachment, the main symptom is people will perceive, depending upon how much amount of an detachment has happened, that kind of a vision loss is there. So people usually describe, I am seeing one curtain which is gradually falling from above or there is some kind of a shadow which is gradually coming from down and it is gradually extending. This is a typical condition till your vision related area is not involved. The moment vision related area will get involved, there will be a sudden painless vision loss. That is what is the main complaint kind of.
So the next question is how is retinal detachment treated? So as I said, the, the retinal detachment can be treated only and only surgically. There are different different types of an surgery. Some of the surgeries are called as an external retina surgeries and some of them are called as an internal retina surgeries. Among the external retina surgery, there is something called as a nemoretinopexy. So somebody, if at all, has come in very early stages of a retinal detachment where only a sectoral part of the retina has detached, can very well be fixed only with the help of small injection of gas inside the eye. The treatment is called as a nemoretinopexy. This is the least invasive treatment for the retinal detachment. If your detachment is on slightly bigger extent, which cannot be treated with the help of nemoretinopexy, it can be treated with the help of an external surgery called as a scleral buckle, or it can be treated with the help of internal surgery called as a vitrectomy, where we go inside the eye endoscopically, clear out all the jelly which is creating a traction on the retina so that that detachment can be released and retina can fall back on its place. And depending upon the duration of the retinal detachment and the condition of the retina after settling it back in a place, some kind of a pressurizing agent has been put inside the eye. This pressurizing agent can be in the form of a gas. The advantage of gas is it's self-limiting and it doesn't need any more surgery to remove. If the retina is badly damaged, then as I explained earlier, we put something called as silicon oil. It's an excellent agent to place the retina back in the place. The only thing is he, if somebody undergoes a surgery with the help of silicon oil, it needs another surgery three to six months down the line to remove that silicon oil. This is how we treat the retinal detachment. So what exactly leads to the retinal detachment kind of hand? So as we have discussed, uh, the most common causes, if the people had a minus power earlier in the life, they usually have some amount of a peripheral retinal degenerations. We call it as a lattice degeneration. If these degenerations are not treated in time, these are the potentially weak areas where the thinning happens and ultimately it leads to a retinal detachment. So somebody who is having a high minus power is one of the pathogenesis or one of the reason for retinal detachment to happen. Second condition is if somebody is having a acute injury, particularly in the form of tennis ball injury while playing a cricket, a ball injury while playing a football, somebody who had a fall directly on the eye. These are the conditions which leads to the retinal detachment. And lastly, even if somebody doesn't have a high minus power, there is no, no history of injury, there is something called as an age-related component which happens particularly after the age of 60 where the jelly inside the eye will contract and while contracting it will pull or detach your retina. This condition we call it as a vitreous degeneration. So these are the common reasons that people might have age-related vitreous degenerations, people who had some kind of blunt eye injuries and people who used to have high power of glasses are more prone for the retinal detachment. So retinal detachment is basic. The question is what conditions are associated with retinal detachment? So it's basically an acute retinal condition. So retinal detachment are not specifically associated with people who had a sugar, BP or associated condition. As I said, it is either age related or injury related or a person who have a high minus power. These are the only three associations which are associated with the retinal detachment. Systemic factors like having a sugar BP doesn't make you more prone for the retinal detachment as such. Yeah, this is the very good question. How can we keep our retina healthy and secure? Kind of thing. So health of the retina is mainly determined by certain vitamins, particularly beta carotenes and vitamin A. So uh, Good healthy diet 
is what we discuss have a huge important role not only maintaining the health of the retina but health, maintaining the health of the overall eye so one should have a sufficient amount of a daily dose of vitamin A as well as beta carotenes, which is abundantly available in all your red color things. So I usually advise to people to have good amount of a beetroot, carrot, papitas, pomegranate, and those shouldn't be very huge. We usually say a 50 to 70 gram of any of these red color things in a day's diet is more than sufficient to give you that good supplement of vitamin A as well as the beta carotenes. Regarding what we can keep it to maintain it healthy and how to secure it kind of. Unfortunately, external remedies is like there are a lot of misconceptions in my working on the computer or watching a TV or uh, kind of an are associated with retina related damage. These are not the things which causes the retina damage, but they do make you feel tired. So, so the only way to secure is to have your regular retina checkup, which should be at least once in a year. Lot of retina related problems in early stages doesn't give any symptoms at all. This is the sad part of the retina conditions and it is only the doctor who can detect these kind of retina problems in early stages. And if at all they are there, they should be treated as early as possible and prevent it from going into the further stages kind of. Thing. So a good healthy diet, good amount of vitamin A, beta carotenes and a regular eye checkup. This is the mantra to keep your retina healthy and secure. So the question is, when is patient transfer indicated for treatment of retinal detachment? So as I said, the retinal detachment is a dire emergency and Earlier it's operated, better it is in terms of giving a visual prognosis. So the most common question from the patient's aspect, once I explain everything, you have a retinal detachment, you will be needing a surgery. This is how you are supposed to take a post-operative care. The question pops out is, am I going to get a complete vision? And answer to this depends upon how early the retinal detachment gets operated. Just imagine if somebody had a retinal detachment of uh, retinal detachment got today, if it's operated within first three to five days, the vision recovery is supposed to be excellent. That is somewhere up to 90% compared to a normal person. And uh, as the duration keeps on increasing, the visual prognosis or recovery of the one's vision, the chances gets reduced. So the patient should be transferred as early as possible to a retina specialist once he gets detected with a retinal detachment. So the question is, what are common types of ocular traumas kind of? An? So two of the most common type of an ocular injuries are the ball injuries and second most common are the firecracker related injuries kind of. An. So ball injuries, people who play long tennis, people who plays cricket, there is a direct impact of the eyeball. Protection is the only way out kind of and so while playing a cricket, you can use your helmet kind of and these kind of an injuries are called as a blunt injuries. So as such, you won't be seeing a lot of injuries or you won't be seeing much amount of laceration, much amount of bleeding, but internally on an inner aspect, it, these kind of blunt injuries creates a havoc. And worst case scenarios, people have huge bleeding, people have retinal tears and ultimately the retinal detachments also with these kind of injuries. Second eye common injuries are kind of an firecracker related injuries, which are typically around after a new year and most commonly after the post Diwali's kind of an. These should be attended as early as possible. There are ways to take giving it an eye wash. There are ways to prevent such kind of an superficial burns kind of an, and they should be treated as early as possible. So yes, uh, 
but the question is are the eye injuries cause the retina related problem so depending upon the severity if it's a very minor injury if somebody had just kind of in some external scratching lacerations usually your retina or eyeball is not involved but if it is a high speed injuries another type of an injury i forgot to mention is occupational so people who do carpentry people who do some amount of an grinding and all that these injuries are associated with high velocity foreign body impact kind of hand so we have done lot of surgeries where we have removed a part of nail we have removed a small pencil ka lids from the eye lot of foreign objects like iron particles and all that so it depends upon what kind of a speed was there while the particular object hit your eyeball that will determine whether the retina will get involved or not but usually the cricket ball injuries long tennis ball injuries shuttlecock uh, badminton shuttlecock injuries and the occupational things somebody who is doing a grinding somebody who is doing a welding these injuries are associated with retina involvement so i think that's it these were the common common questions all you people had i hope this was a good informative time to all of you kind of and so we are practicing at agarwal's eye hospital washi navi mumbai any more queries you can mail me up you will have the contact numbers also where we can speak to you kind of and thank you so much and with this i'll like to end the session thank you